everybody. Welcome to the program. I'm Megyn Kelly. And today, millions of people are mourning the loss of an American fashion icon. Could you believe about Kate Spade? Right? It was shocking when we found out yesterday she was found dead in her Manhattan apartment of an apparent suicide. She started a fashion empire by designing the must-have handbag for an entire generation of women. And this morning, some new details are emerging about her private life. Her sister sharing some intimate details about Kate Spade's personal struggles. Our own Stephanie Gosk has more. Watch. This morning, Kate Spade's grieving sister says the designer's apparent suicide was not unexpected to her. Rita Sappho emailing the Kansas City Star overnight. Sometimes you simply cannot save people from themselves. One of the last things she said to me was, Rita, I know you hate funerals and don't attend them, but for me, would you please come to mine, at least, please. I know she perhaps had a plan, but she insisted she did not. Sappho says Spade was self-medicating with alcohol, and she repeatedly tried to get her into rehab, but says Spade was worried it would harm her happy-go-lucky brand. Her sister also telling the Daily Mail that Spade was obsessed with Robin Williams' suicide back in 2014, saying she was glued to coverage. She kept watching it and watching it over and over. I think the plan was already in motion, even as far back as then. It appears at this point in time to be a, a tragic case of apparent suicide, but it is early in the investigation. There was a suicide note left at the scene. Sir, 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 this morning, sir. a single question surrounds Spade's apparent suicide. Why? In an interview with NPR last year, Spade suggests she suffered with anxiety. And I also am very, a very nervous person. I worry a lot. You were like the sleepless nights person? Yes. And always, you know, the, the sky is falling. Top names in the fashion world, like Anna Wintour, remember Spade, like her bags, as unpretentious. The Vogue editor-in-chief telling today, Kate designed with great charm and humor and built a global empire that reflected exactly who she was and how she lived. Long before we talked about authenticity, she defined it. Hi, I'm Kate Valentine Spade. For a whole generation of young women, Kate Spade was the bag to have. Former first daughters Chelsea Clinton and Jenna Bush both tweeting they got their first Kate Spade bags as gifts in college. Actor Mindy Kaling honoring how Spade's clothes made her feel. They were colorful, bold, cheerful, and encouraged women to find the twinkly person inside them. Spade's brother-in-law, the comedian David Spade, posting a photo to Instagram, writing, She was so sharp and quick on her feet. She could make me laugh so hard. I still can't believe it. It's a rough world out there, people. Try to hang on. In 2002, Spade had a poignant message for Glamour magazine about her legacy. I hope that people remember me not just as a good businesswoman, but as a great friend and a heck of a lot of fun. Mm. Joining me now to talk about it and other headlines making the rounds today, NBC's Stephanie Gosk and legal analyst Dan Abrams, who is author of the new book, Lincoln's Last Trial. Welcome to you both. You. Boy, that statement from Mindy Kaling about she, she designed bags that made you find the sparkly person inside of you. And the irony, of course, of knowing now that she couldn't find the same inside it just, herself. Yeah, it just goes to show how insidious mental illness is. And this is just a reminder that no matter how much success you have on the outside, and she was a trailblazer in her industry, a maverick at points, that inside... You can be struggling with something that people don't realize. Absolutely, that no matter how much money or success you have, you still may have very real problems when it comes to mental health and depression. And you think about the fact that she has a daughter, right? And And a 13-year-old daughter who's going to be hearing about her problems. She's going to be hearing about the suicide note. She's obviously, most importantly, going to be missing her mother. Um, and so it reminds you how much pain there must have been there uh, to allow that to happen. To get to the point where you feel your child will be better off right. without you. Where, where you know, it, it's, it's just, it's, it just shows you, again, as Stephanie's pointing out, um, the impact of mental illness. And it's something that we actually, I still don't think we talk about enough in this country. I couldn't more. We don't, because there's a stigma. 
yeah. attached to mental and illness. And it sounds like that's exactly what she was worried about. Which, of course, like, who would not buy a Kate Spade handbag because they knew she was suffering with, according to her sister, bipolar disorder, right? And I mean, one of the things that the sister said in, in one of the comments that she made to multiple outlets um, was that she had tried to get her sister into rehab, but that Spade was worried about the impact that that would have on the brand, and that is exactly at the core of this misunderstanding that it that it may have had that impact. Meanwhile, almost a, almost a million suicides happen in the world a year, almost a million. It's twice the rate of homicides. Women attempt suicide more than men, um, and yet we still stigmatize it, and people sit at home thinking they're the only one, and then they feel guilty about their own depression. Do not feel guilty about your own depression. There is the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It's open 24-7. It's free. There is kindness there. Just make a simple phone call. Look, it's right there on your screen, 1-800-273-8255. Free, confidential support. What could it hurt to try? The number of calls that police get with people worried about uh, either a loved one who may be committing suicide or a concern about someone, it happens every day. Uh, where police are constantly responding to these sorts of things. It ha it's just, it is a, a real, it's an epidemic uh, in this country and, and beyond. to stop and think about, even if you may be thinking in your darkest moment that those around you will be better off without you, of course they will not. That child, she's, you know, the truth is that Kate Spade's child is going to have lasting damage as a result of this, and hopefully will get the, the help that she needs. But as a parent, you have to think, so long and hard about what that fateful decision will mean for the people you love most in the world. Um, okay, let's shift gears now because that's just too sad, too sad to spend too much time thinking of. Um, less sad is Bill Clinton. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you can, you can, you can make the argument. Um, he's still digging after his interview with Craig Melvin on Monday, still digging, and had yet another bite at the apple last night with Stephen Colbert. Here's what he's saying now about Monica Lewinsky and Me Too. It wasn't my finest hour, but the important thing is that was a very painful thing that happened uh, 20 years ago. And I apologize to my family, to Monica once again, her family, to the American people. I'm in it then, I'm in it now. I've had to live with the consequences every day since. And I still believe... Did he get it done that time? No, look, I, I mean, it, no. No, let's be clear. Let's be clear on what the reckoning was for Bill Clinton. The reckoning for Bill Clinton was getting caught in the lie, right? The lie about Paula Jones. That's what Under he's, oath. Correct. That's what, and that, again, for those of us who care about law and order, no matter whether you thought he should be impeached or not impeached, or whatever, it's a big deal. It's a big deal uh, to lie under oath. But now we're talking about an entirely new issue. Now, when I say new issue, he would say, it's the same issue I've been asked about before. I've been asked about this for years. What makes this different is, let's be honest, we're in a different environment now. Mm -hmm. Accountability is different than it was even three years ago. Wouldn't it have just been refreshing if in that moment with Craig Melvin, he said, you know what, Craig, I haven't spoken to her. I should. I owe yes. her an apology. Yeah. Yes. It hurt her for her life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. And stop why talking not, about himself. Why not, why not just say that? Why not just own that? I have to say, Frank Rooney of the New York Times nailed it. He wrote today, he was making a comparison between Bill Clinton and Donald Trump. He wrote, the hair is wrong, but the air is right. Self-righteous, self-pitying, and suffused with anger that anyone would peddle a version of events less heroic than the one he prefers. At an hour-starved moment, an, uh, at an honor-starved moment, when most of our politicians are quicker to shirk responsibility than to shoulder it, I cringe at his evasions and rationalizations. Hashtag me too, Frank. Uh, yeah. <laughs> me too. All right, wait, I've got to ask you. So... You have written... Dan Abrams is the busiest man I know. Mm -hmm. um, you're an ABC News legal analyst. You run all these websites, which I love, Mediate, Law & Order. Um, you have your own show on A&E. You argue with Nancy Grace on television for a living. Yeah. Uh, and which, I mean, kudos to you yeah. just for that. And on top of all that, yeah. you've now released this book about our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, called Lincoln's Last Trial, which is about his... He had 25 murder trials over the course of his career. You'd chronicle the last one after finding this transcript of it. And at first I thought, yawn, yeah. <laughs> even though I love you. And then I, and then I start reading more about it, and I find out it's got all these ditties about Lincoln, about how, for example, he had a preference on certain jurors when it came to their 
large foreheads yeah. and their round bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He liked one, he disliked the other. Yeah. And all these other fun things that you learn about him. So this was a, a fascinating murder trial from nine months before he got the Republican nomination. What makes it so interesting is it's the only case that Lincoln ever argued that we have a full transcript for. Transcripts weren't taken back right, then. Right. It happened that the defendant in this case, his family had enough money to hire the same person who had transcribed the Lincoln-Douglas debates for Lincoln. And so, Which had made him a celebrity going into this oh trial. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this is the only reason that Lincoln really became nationally known, was the Lincoln-Douglas debates. And this guy who transcribed it was his guy. And so when, when the family said, we want to make sure, in case he's convicted, that we know what was said in court, they had this guy, Robert Hitt, there, taking everything down. And this was only discovered, the transcript, in 1989. It was literally in a box, in, wrapped in a, uh, a yellow bow, a chewed-up box, found in the garage of the great-grandson of the defendant. Can you imagine? Um, all, with all Lincoln's own words in it. Right. Um, and so my co-author and I, David Fisher, were amazed that no one had done much with this. How can this be a footnote to history? Because he spent a lot more time as a lawyer than he did as a president. And, and so it's a window. It. Yeah, yeah. Right. We never talk about it. We talk about Lincoln all the time and how great he was, but you never hear about him as it, a lawyer. It made me wonder, who's our next rising star lawyer? who might make a run for the presidency. And then I quickly ruled out Michael Avenatti right, yeah, and yeah, yeah, Michael yeah, yeah, Cohen yeah, 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 and several yeah, others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, back in the day, lawyers were actually celebrated, meaning they would go and travel on the circuit from place to place. And people, sound like good days. Right? People would be so happy when they'd come to town. And they'd say, oh, well, you know, I've got this issue, and I've got that issue. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. These days, people are like, whoa, the lawyers are in yeah, town. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Let, uh, Stay away. Let, I always say, like, lawyers are, are like guns. You know, you're completely against them until, like, trouble comes. Yeah, and yeah. then you're like, well, I'm, i got to think about it. Yeah. Great great to see you. Good luck with it. Thank you Lincoln's very much. Lincoln's last trial is far from Leon. It's actually really interesting and very much insight into our president, so which I think you'll enjoy. Stephanie, great to see you. Sir. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.